Hello, this is New Vision TV. I am Lynn Komjisha. The Inspector General of Police, Martin Okothochola, who took office last week on Thursday, has so far made tremendous changes in the force in such a short time. On the weekend, it was reported that Ochola called for a countrywide audit of all firearms. Then on Monday, he made transfers within the force. And just yesterday, Ochola merged directorates and specialized units. So question at hand is, will Ochola succeed where his predecessor Kaihura failed? The shape that the police force is said to take can already be seen in the nature of transfers that IGP Okotho Chola has made in the first week in office. Many police officers have described the transfers as simply putting the right people in the right places. The new IGP has made many deployments already and a look at those at the very top of the force are quite telling. AIGP Abbas Biakagawa is highly trained and experienced in counter-terrorism but has spent several years in the largely redundant oil and gas directorate, sometimes also working at Kampala Metropolitan Police. He is now back as director for counter-terrorism. Meanwhile, AIGP John Indugutse, who has been director counter-terrorism, will keep his other office as an attache in Nairobi, where he has been for a while coordinating counter-terrorism work in the region. And Senior Commissioner Richard Ediogu, who for long served as Deputy Director for Engineering and Logistics, but had recently been posted to do virtually nothing in the IGP's office, has been sent back where he belongs, as Deputy Director for Engineering and Logistics. Many officers who have been redundant and ostensibly posted in the IGP's office have been sent where they suitably belong. And the top officers who were transferred a year ago following the sudden death of AIGP Kawesi to offices they were placed to handle have been maintained there. These include AIGP Asan Kasinja as Chief Political Commissar, Bing Man, who did a lot to conceptualize community policing in Uganda. AIGP Dr. Fred Yiga as Director Interpol and International Relations, being a man who served as a United Nations Territorial Police Chief, and AIGP Asman Mujeni as Director of Operations, being a man who has served in the field all over Uganda and has also vast experience in force public relations as well as community policing. IGP Okotho Chola is definitely going to immediately start restoring professionalism in the force, as he reportedly even told Parliament's Appointments Committee that it died the day General Katumba Amala left police in 2005, over 12 years ago. The political involvement of the police is one of the things that have tarnished the image of the force, the other being criminality in its ranks. Ochola will not play any role in partisan party politics like his predecessor, Kare Kaihura, who was at the forefront of fighting the former Secretary General and Prime Minister Amama Mbabazi when he exhibited presidential ambitions and wanted to challenge President Jerry Museveni for party supremacy. It also means that the tolerance of officers like ASP Siraj Bakarike, who openly urged those under his command to support the ruling party, will stop unless their professional performance is satisfactory. There has been a proliferation of directorates and specialized units. This will not only stop under Okotho Chola, but many existing ones will be downgraded and merged under others, as already directed in his message sent out on 18th March 2018. The former IGP Kalika Uhura has been quite generous with promotions and his extravagance with ranks will definitely stop under Okotho Chola. Police officers will definitely have to work a lot harder to attain higher ranks. The thousands of assistants pretenders of police who hold the ranks simply because they joined the force after attaining a university degree in recent years will have to remain at that rank for a long time unless they exhibit exceptional performance. Powerful civilians of questionable reputations to meddle into police affairs is likely to stop. 
The emergence of one Abdallah Chitata, who was feared by many DPCs and could not only lock up so-called suspects in police cells, but also deploy hooligans to block court proceedings, is unlikely to happen again. Under Okotho Chola, all police work will be done by police officers. The days of informal groups with characteristics of militias are also numbered. As a career police officer, Okoth Ochola is unlikely to allow groups like Boda Boda 2010 and Chifesi to claim to do police work. He has even taken his time to pronounce himself over crime preventers. So unlike civilians and the public who introduce themselves with the first name, in police, an officer starts with a surname, first name, and other names. So the new IGP is Okoth Martin Ochola. In other words, Omo. Will Omo be the detergent that will cleanse the big stains of the police? Moving on, the Democratic Party has celebrated the triumph of fellow opposition party Forum for Democratic Change in the recent Ginger East by-election, saying it embodies a unified opposition. In last Thursday's repeat election, Paul Mwiru, the FDC flag bearer, beat a seven-strong competition to clinch a seat that had gone vacant earlier this year. His main challenger, Nathan Igeme, a better of the ruling National Resistance Movement, lost the position from a court decision in January, paving way for a by-election. Following Mwiru's triumph last week, the DP has uh, congratulated his party uh, for reigning supreme in a hotly contested poll. Meanwhile, police has arrested a driver suspected to have knocked dead a traffic officer. A tweet from the Kampala Metropolitan Police says, We have arrested the runaway Divine Coaches driver on suspicion of murdering a traffic officer at Old Kampala. The tweet continues to state that the suspect, identified as Godfrey Kakonge, was arrested after a serious manhunt. He was found hiding in Chetume Chazanga, a place he sought refuge after knocking the deceased cop. Corporal Wilfred Tway took a traffic officer attached to Old Kampala Police Station a week ago. And in sports news, hosting the Africa Boxing Union Convention will be the new Uganda Professional Boxing Commission President, Salim Uhuru's first assignment. Uhuru, also the proprietor of the famous chain of Uhuru restaurants, takes over from Bosa Chiyinji, who has been in charge since 2013. Uhuru has also set reconciliation with rival body UBU as a key target of his uh, four-year term. To enhance good working relations, Uhuru appointed UBU promoters Benjamin Mukasa and Godfrey Kasule to the UPBC board. You're still watching New Vision TV and now for Pearl of Africa series, we take a look at the white egret. Uganda has a total of 1,061 bird species. These are concentrated in forests, lakes, and the sky, of course, and the mountains. Today, we look at one of the most adorable species, the white egret, commonly known as Enyange. <laughs> The agret is loved and treasured because of white feathers, which keeps it immaculately clean. In fact, its name Enyange is not mostly used to depict cleanliness. Found in many parts of Uganda, the agret flies in large flocks and their snow-white plumage is so fascinating to watch as they fly in V-shaped formation. In Kampala City, you don't have to travel far beyond the center to see thousands of egrets for they congregate at the Kabakas Lake. The locals have an old saying that if only the Kabaka wanted to enjoy his royalty to the full, he would only employ egrets to brew his beer. In fact, several old laundry companies used to include the word Nyange in their names. 
For more Pearl of Africa stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures. So get your copy every Sunday for Pearl of Africa stories. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop, on your tablet, anywhere on the go by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I am Lynn Komdisha.